go ahead and call us to order. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Lee County Board of Port Commissioners and the Airport Special Management Committee. Today is June 29th, and the time is 9.30. Let's begin this morning with our invocation. I'd like to uh, invite Pastor Aprile uh, to uh, Osborne to come and join us at the podium here for our invocation. Everyone, please rise. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our territory and our land. We invite you into this place, into this meeting, Father. We ask you to come with your spirit of wisdom and revelation, Father, as we gather together to make decisions and lead. Father, we thank you for your leadership in our life, and we invite you to come in and lead us. Have your way in this territory and in this meeting and over all of these beautiful people, Father. I thank you, Jesus, that you're just pleading your blood over this territory and over this city. And I thank you, God, that we come under your leadership in this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands. stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> okay. This morning we'll begin with the uh, consent agenda. And uh, I'd like to ask Commissioner Greenwell, do you have any items that you'd like to pull for discussion? Uh, no, I do not. Commissioner Sandelli? No. Okay. I have no items to pull for discussion. Um, at this time, let's go ahead and... Um, Take public comment on the consent agenda. Has anyone come to speak in public comment on any of the consent agenda items today? Okay, I see no speakers, so we'll close public comment. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Motion for approval from Commissioner Greenwell and the seconds from Commissioner Sandelli. Do we have any discussion, commissioners? Okay, I see no discussion. Are there any objections? No objections. That motion carries unanimously. All right, let's begin with the administrative agenda. Mr. Director, please introduce the first item. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, item 16 on the administrative agenda, request the board approve our fiscal year 23-24 budget, among some other items that I would uh, ask Mr. McGonigal to uh, introduce the item, please. Thank you. Yeah, uh, hey, uh, good morning, Commissioners. Um, there's, there's, there's a few items uh, that we're asking for approval. Uh, like Ben said, the budget for next year, the rates and fees, the 23-24 for compensation plan, page failed rates and fees, and an increase in our public parking rates. Um, we, we did have a workshop with you in May, if you recall. The numbers before you today and the goals, they're identical numbers. Nothing has changed. Um, just to refresh your memory, I'll give you a couple of key indicators that we're looking at. Uh, last year in 2022, we had 11.1 million passengers. It was the best year ever. Uh, right now, we're 16% below that through May. Uh, we, we send you the numbers every month. The summer's looking pretty good. The, actual, the seats coming in this summer are slightly higher than 22, about 3 to 5% more. Next year, we feel pretty comfortable going in with a budget of 10.1 million passengers. We feel pretty good with that. Um, a, a few other key indicators is our personnel. We did allocate resources for nine new positions next year. And also, we did put a 5% pay plan adjustment per year direction. Um, it's just a placeholder. We'll get further direction from the board later on this summer. But that's also in there. Uh, we did have, we had a productive meeting with the airlines last month. We presented in detail the budget. Uh, they had no questions. It was a good meeting, constructive meeting. The cost per EP is coming in at $8.10, which is very reasonable. Uh, they were happy with that. It's about where we want to be. And then um, also we discussed parking rates. And uh, again, uh, just to refresh your memory, the garage, we're going to uh, go up from 18 a day to 24 a day. We're not touching the hourly rate uh, just to relieve congestion in the garage. Um, and then in the long-term lot, we are eliminating the second discounted week. So that's kind of the key indicators of, of the budget. I appreciate it. Very good introduction. Commissioners, do you have any questions on any of the items? No questions? Okay. Well, at this time, I'd like to open the floor for public comment. Uh, if you'd like to speak in public comment on this item, just please raise your hand real quick, and I'll have you come down to the podium. 
Okay, I see no speakers then, so we'll close public comment. Commissioners, uh, back to the board. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Oh, motion for approval from Commissioner Greenwell and a second from Commissioner Sandelli. Do we have any discussion on this item, Commissioners? I mean, I think we worked through the discussion pretty thoroughly at the workshop, so and everything appears to be in line with what we talked about. Uh, Mr. Andres. When do these rates take effect? Uh, October 1st. October 1st. No, yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Any further questions then? All right, seeing no further questions or discussion, I'll call the question. Are there any objections? No objections. That motion carries unanimously. All right, please introduce item 17. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item 17 requests the board enter into an agreement with JBT Aerotech for uh, with uh, totaling 190,000 uh, to uh, for the our jet systems. So, Brian, you want to? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, in November 21, we completed the replacement of all of our 27 passenger uh, jet bridges. It was a good project. Uh, with that project came with a system, a performance and safety system that alerted our maintenance department if there's any issues with any of the bridges. Which is a really neat system that our maintenance department um, really likes. That system, uh, we're, re we're, we're renewing that system. Our procurement department did a great job. They, they negotiated a five-year deal. We got a 5% discount. So we're going to keep this system going for, for 190000 for five years. Very good. Commissioners, any questions? Has anyone come to speak in public comment on item 17? I see no hands. Uh, commissioners, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll move my own. Motion for approval from Commissioner Sandelli. I'll second. Second from <coughs> Commissioner Greenwell. Any discussion? Are there any objections? No objections. That motion carries unanimously. Please introduce item 18. Item 18, I request the board approve a land lease for the construction of a corporate hangar with Alessio Development. Brian, you want to? Further introduce the item, please. Yeah, this is a corporate hangar at Page with Alessio. Uh, this is Alessio Development. Uh, this is a 20-year lease of land. They're going to build a hangar. It also, uh, it's a typical land lease with three five-year options, so it can go out to 35 years. Um, this, it will commence um, July 1st with a uh, $1,400 per month rent with CPIs throughout the whole agreement. Very good. Commissioners, any questions for the team? Yeah, I have one question. So the, the, they're, they're responsible for all costs of actually building the hangar? Yes, sir. And, and everything. It's basically a, a, a lease of the land. Exactly. It's a ground lease. Yeah, they're responsible for permits and building and everything. Great. Any further questions? All right. Seeing none, um, we'll go to public comment on item number 18. Has anyone come to speak in public comment on item 18? Okay, I see no speakers. Uh, back to the board. Anybody uh, wish to make a motion? I'll move Motion for approval from Commissioner Sandelli. I'll second. Second from Commissioner Greenwell. Do we have any discussion? All right, I see no discussion. Are there, oh, uh, no. Uh, what Mr. happens Andres? after the 35 years is up with the facility? Great question. Revert, it, uh, no, it reverts back to us. Oh, it reverts back to us. Yes, and okay. they're responsible to keep the upkeep the whole time. Upkeep. Yep, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And we get it. Yeah. And they would have the ability to renegotiate a lease to continue use. Of yes. It, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And at that point, though, we would get not only the land lease, but we'd actually get the lease on the building itself. It, exactly. Too, after 35 yep. Yep. years. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. Um, all right. Any further discussion or questions on that? All right. I see no further discussion or questions. Are there any objections? No objections. Then that motion carries unanimously. Uh, please introduce item 19. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's very similar. It's another land lease uh, for a corporate hangar. This one is with Powers Consulting Group. Um, exact same terms, 20 years with three five, three five-year options. This parcel is a little bit bigger. It's a 28,000 square foot parcel that they're going to build a hangar on. It's close to the Alessio one. Uh, so we're happy to do that. This one's 1,700 a month approximately. That kicks in July 1st. Okay. Any questions on this one, Commissioner? Just, just a comment. I was um, we started talking about airplanes and real estate. I piqued my interest and stuff, so we had a brief yesterday. And the, and the question is, you know, do we build any spec, you know, hangers for, to, so people can do that? And then I had a good conversation on that. We don't want to tie up capital to do that. Um, so these are all kind of builder suits, but we do have a bulk facility. Perhaps. So if people want to bring the airplanes here, we want to accommodate them. So uh, I think we'll move in an interesting direction. Any comments uh, 
been at all, Mr. No, I think it's it's uh, well said. Uh, you know, a lot of times these these corporate hangars are really uh, built for you know specifically for a certain type of aircraft. So for us to you know want to come in and say we'll we'll build a spec one, we don't know what type of aircraft ultimately would go in there. So it makes more sense for the individual to build it for themselves. But the bulk bulk hangers um, really come in handy for for FBOs and, and stuff. And we have two of those. And um, they are utilized all year long in full. So excellent. Yeah. Good deal. All right. Well, then, seeing no further questions, um, let me open the floor to public comment. Item number nineteen. Has anybody come to speak on that item? Okay. I see no speakers. So uh, back to the board. Does somebody wish to make a motion? Motion for approval from Commissioner Sandelli. Second from Commissioner Greenwell. Do we have any discussion on the item? I see no discussion. Are there any objections? No objections. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, please introduce item 20. Uh, number 20, commissioners request uh, board approve a service provider agreement with Bradford Airport Logistics. This is for the operation of the of the airport's new CRDC, which is the Consolidated Receiving and Distribution Center. Uh, the, a critical, just a quick history on this, critical component of the terminal expansion project is to remove the remote loading dock that's currently attached to our building. Um, we're going to move that to the CRDC. It's the building is almost complete. If you're leaving the airport, if you're on the front curb and you're leaving the airport, you'll see it on the right. It's a nice looking building. Um, so it's a standalone CRDC. All deliveries now that currently go to the building, our tenants have to go meet the trucks, break it down, and take their goods to their various locations. Now all deliveries will be going to the CRDC. This agreement is uh, we went out on the street to provide to find a provider to operate this facility. Bradford Logistics was the only one that proposed. This is a seven year agreement with them. Bradford, this is all they do. They're in 22 plus airports. Uh, they've been around 23, 24 years. This is all they do. Um, they're very good at it. Um, they recently just opened Orlando. They're in Tampa and throughout, throughout the country. Um, so th this seven-year term that we uh, negotiated with starts at, it's an annual fixed fee. We're going to pay all their expenses. It starts at $1.5 million, seven years out to $1.9. Uh, this is, uh, we are going to, this is what we call the cost neutral model. So we are going to charge our concessions a CRDC fee. So we're getting 90% of that money back anyhow. And the, the uh, concessions are expecting it. It's kind of the norm. Um, they, they have it in other facilities, uh, so they're expecting it. So all the goods will be delivered, and, and Bradford will screen all the goods and deliver it to our tenants. So we're actually excited, and I have representatives from Bradford here today if you have any questions. What questions <coughs> do you have, Commissioner? Does anybody have any questions? <coughs> I see no uh, no questions then. So has anybody come to speak in public comment on item 20? <coughs> I see no speakers, so we'll move to the board. Uh, anybody wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion for approval from Commissioner Greenwell. Second. Second from Commissioner Sandelli. Do we have any uh, discussion on that item? All right, I see no discussion. Are there any objections? No objections. That motion carries unanimously. Great work on that. Sounds yeah, thank like you've you. got a good, good thank group. You. Um, all right. Please introduce item 21. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Um, item 21 requests the board approve the first amendment to the management agreement for the operation and management um, of our rental car fuel system uh, with fuel facility management. And I'd ask Mr. Hennigan to further explain the item. Thank you. Good morning. For the record, Stephen Hennigan. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, item uh, 21. Uh, request the board approve the first amendment to the management agreement for the operation, management, and maintenance of the rental car fueling system with the fuel facility management. This would extend the initial term of the contract uh, for an additional two years as provided by in the original agreement. Um, just to note, all of these expenses related to the fueling system are directly reimbursed in accordance with their concessionaires' agreements that we have with them. Excellent. Commissioners, what questions do we have? All right, I see no questions. Has anyone come to speak in public comment on item 21? All right, I see no speakers. Uh, back to the board. Uh, does somebody wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. All right. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Greenwell, second by Commissioner Sandelli. Any further discussion? Are there any objections? No objections. That motion carries unanimously. Please introduce item 22. 
Item 22 requests board approve a five-year contract between the Lee County Port Authority and ABM Aviation for the operation and management of airport parking and shuttle services at Southwest Florida International Airport. The total cost for this five-year contract is $4,126,373 plus any reimbursable operating expenses as approved by the authority. Uh, reimbursable expenses are expected to be approximately $4.7 million the first year and are comparable with the existing contract we have with our current provider. Um, the reimbursable expenses are approved separately through the annual operating budget um, process. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions, commissioners, on this one? I think uh, the one thing that you all shared with me during my briefing was that the opportunity for better technology here really has an opportunity to increase the customer experience as they, as they deal with this group. Yes, sir. It allows us to look at some different things. Um, enhance our guest experience uh, outside of what we're doing now with our own internal IT uh, team and our contracts, um, the person that oversees our contract now. So we're very excited about the possibilities that this contract has for the airport. Okay, good one. Uh, Commissioner Sandelli. Uh, you mentioned customer service. Um, had an issue come up this past week where somebody saw one of our uh, trash haulers and the truck was in pretty bad shape. And they said, what's going on? Well, they lost a number of trucks you know, during the hurricane. So they're replacing those. But made me think about how we operate this and what vans are using, because that's the first touch point. Oh, the shop. And yeah. uh, I guess at one point it has been clarified for me that we we owned them at one time and we couldn't maintain them the right way. So they're maintaining the vehicles themselves to give us that first point uh, a better interpretation. Very good. Thank you, Agnes. Yeah, that is, that is correct. We, we've over the years, we've looked at the shuttle bus operation in different ways, and um, we've determined um, that it makes the most sense for us to own them ourselves and maintain maintain them ourselves because of, of what Commissioner Sandelli pointed out. Um, they need to be kept clean. They need to be well-maintained. We found that the provider sometimes didn't take as much pride as necessarily we would. And, the, you know, our customers, we want to make sure that they're having a great experience from the, as soon as they park their vehicle to the time they get into the airport. Um, and uh, so we own all, we just had agenda items previously and we purchased all new shuttle buses. They were due for that, uh, due, um, due to a, uh, their useful life. And uh, we're excited about that. So. I, th I think we all use Uber and Lyft on a number of occasions, and you can see you get in some cars, and they're great, and you get in others, and go, hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, the first experience, Absolutely. one star. So. Well, good. Well, all right. If there are no further questions, then I'll go ahead and call for public comment on item 22. Has anyone come to speak on item 22? Okay, I see no speakers. Uh, back to the board. Does somebody wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion for approval from Second. Commissioner Greenwell. Second from Commissioner Sandelli. Do we have any discussion? All right, I see no discussion. Are there any objections? No objections. That passes unanimously. All right. Um, Mr. Director, please introduce item 23. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, item 23 requests the board approve a contract amendment with Schenkel Schultz in the amount of $1,048,000 for the design of a public safety building at RSW. And I would ask uh, Ms. Underhill to further explain that item. Okay. Good morning, uh, commissioners and committee members. For the record, Emily Underhill. For item number 23, in November of 2022, the board authorized an agreement with Schenkel and Schultz to perform design services for a new public safety building, approximately 18,600 plus square feet, plus approximately 7,000 square feet for future expansion. It's to be located along Air Cargo Lane, just west of the new remote loading dock facility. The new facility we will relocate APD functions currently located in the terminal building and provide for a new airport emergency operations center and backup location for AIRCOM dispatch operations. Since November, Schenkel and Schultz have developed a concept of the building and the needed site improvements. Staff has now negotiated a task with the consultant to prepare a full design, conduct necessary permitting, and provide construction bidding assistance. Staff asks that the board endorse the contract amendment in the amount of $1,080,504, which provides for these services. <clears throat> Commissioners, any questions on this item? I think the rendering are really attractive. The floor plan looks really good. Makes a lot of sense the way everything's presented. Um, all right, then I'll turn to the public. Has anybody come to speak in public comment on item 23? 
No? All right. Seeing no public comment, back to the board. Does somebody wish to make a motion? I do. Motion for approval from Commissioner Sandelli. A second. Second from Commissioner Greenwell. Do we have any discussion on the item? I see no discussion. Are there any objections? No objections. That motion carries unanimously. All right. And Ms. Underhill, go ahead with item 24. All right. Um, item number 24. At the recent May board meeting, the board concurred with staff's recommendation ranking the team of Suffolk Construction and Wright Construction Group as the top ranked firm. In this capacity, Suffolk will serve as the Port Authority's construction manager for the RSW Concourse E project, which is currently under design. The scope of the design includes a new 14-gate Concourse E facility, associated terminal and roadway expansions, and apron and taxiway improvements to provide added capacity to the RSW terminal through the year 2036. As you know, the project will be the largest project ever undertaken by the Port Authority and will involve complex phasing and construction sequencing. Since the May board meeting, staff has completed contract negotiations with Suffolk and is seeking endorsement of a five-year agreement. The second part of this agenda request includes the first task which provides for pre-construction services to assist the design team. As the design has been underway for almost a year, the CM will be compressing its efforts to bring themselves up to speed and continue to provide pre-construction services to support the design phase ahead of the targeted construction procurement of the project anticipated to be February of 2024. At this time, there are many details to work out, such as defining applicable funding eligibility for the many different pots of money that is anticipated and how the construction portion of the project will ultimately be procured to the subtrade bidders, whether through a construction manager, general contractor delivery, or general contractor hard bid delivery. Until these questions are ironed out with the help of the CM, this initial task is to provide pre-construction services through the 75% milestone of the design process. A follow-on task to complete pre-construction services through the balance of the design process and to perform bidding services will be brought to you later this year. The involvement of the CM during the further development of the design is critical to the project's success, so we ask that the board today accept staff's recommendation to approve this contract in the related pre-construction services task in the amount of $1,520,230. Okay. Great introduction. Any questions, commissioners, on this? Okay. See no questions. Um, let's turn to the public. Has anyone come to speak on item 24? No public uh, comment. Then back to the board. Commissioners, anybody wish to make a motion or is there any discussion? I make a motion to approve. Motion for approval I'll from second. Commissioner Greenwell, second from Commissioner Sandelli. Any, um, any further discussion on the item at all? No. Just wanted to uh, share, I appreciate the thought that you all put into this item and certainly bring in the construction manager in early on to make sure that you can spot any roadblocks or constraints or anything like that early on, I think, or even cost savings too, right? Mm -hmm. Early on oh, makes yes. a ton of sense. So uh, thanks for bringing it forward this way. All right, if there's uh, no further discussion then, are there any objections? No objections, that motion carries unanimously. And uh, Mr. Siegel, would you like me to go to Mr. Fisher for this one? Sure. Okay, sure. Mr. Fisher, you're recognized. Good morning, uh, for the record, Mark Fisher. Uh, administrative item 25 is the fourth and final presentation regarding the RSW Airport Master Plan update. It's been a two-year effort developing the airport's 20-year vision for the future. And with your endorsement today, we'll transmit the master plan documents to the FA and FDOT for their review, comment, and approval. So with that quick intro, I'll uh, bring up Mike Arnold with ESA, one of the lead consultants in the master plan, to uh, run through the final documentation. Excellent. Good morning, commissioners and committee members. Uh, glad to be here in front of you again today. Again, Mike Arnold with ESA. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a reminder, the, the uh, master plan effort has been comprehensive, including numerous uh, land side and airside facilities throughout the airport. And it's uh, been a pretty complex team as well, um, working with uh, Atkins, uh, Recondo, and Johnson Engineering to pull the, uh, the document together. Uh, the number of other Consultants have supported efforts related to the master planning efforts um, as well. Uh, as Mark indicated, it's been a two-year effort. So uh, we kicked it off about two years ago in the fall of 2021. We presented the existing conditions, the forecasts, uh, the additional gate alternatives um, at that point in time. 
in early 2022, we presented the runway demand capacity analysis and the near-term needs and priorities. This was the refinement study for the terminal gates, uh, as well as the North Area Plan. Uh, in the fall of last year, 2022, we presented the facility requirements for the balance of the uh, different uh, projects or, or different uh, facilities at the airport, uh, and the early preferred concepts of how we would accommodate uh, the future needs. Uh, and then we're back in front of you today to talk about the airport layout plan uh, update uh, itself, um, the airport land use plan, some of the environmental work that's gone on, and the overall capital investment program uh, for, for the airport. So two years, uh, right on track, uh, coming together pretty quickly here. Um, the airport layout plan is a, uh, a plan that uh, it's one of the two elements of a, a master plan that the FAA actually approves. They approve the forecasts and they approve the ALP. Uh, they will provide comments on the entire master plan itself, but this is one of the formal documents that they approve. It includes all of the safety area and clearance critical areas for all of the airfield facilities um, and, and the facilities that support aircraft movement, as well as the existing and future uh, facilities for the for the airport. So make the FAA will confirm that the layout and configuration of facilities does not create any safety issues with the future operation of the airport. Uh, so we have depicted uh, a variety of different colors here. The existing facilities are shown in gray or gray scale. Uh, facilities that are needed over the 20-year planning horizon of the master plan are depicted in, in orange. Uh, and then longer term facilities would be in, in the blue uh, with some areas shown in green, which are conservation areas for non-development and some non-aviation area uh, in the north and, and south, very far south side uh, of the airport. Zeroing in a little bit on the terminal area plan itself, um, you can see the future concourse E there. This shows a configuration of the ultimate build out of concourse E, uh, which would be a 19 gate facility. Um, it also shows in, in the blue at the end of each concourse future potential expansion of those concourses as well as a future concourse A in blue on the, the right side of the, uh, the graphic there. Uh, the airport has significant expansion capability from a gate standpoint beyond the 2040 uh, window, 2041 planning window of the master plan. There's also a variety of different uh, uh, parking garage and, and rental car facility and, and other parking um, expansions. So as we, we talk a little bit about those other support facilities themselves, um, this shows the general layout of where those would be. We have the future long-term parking uh, to the north. Let me see if I can make this work without screwing anything up. Oh, maybe not. Oh, there we go. Uh, future long-term parking facilities um, and a variety of different support facilities, future rental car staging areas, um, expansion of the employee parking lot, uh, again, more future long-term parking just out of, outside the runway protection zone of the future runway, uh, and then future cell phone lot uh, along the entrance road um, into the airport. Uh, we had more detailed concepts in the last presentation, but this shows the general outline and location where those facilities would go. And as you move through the design process, the exact configuration of those facilities would be further refined. As we look, take a look at the North Area Plan, this is what we call the North Area Plan, is the area right in and around um, the North Runway, or the, the current existing runway. Um, this area, this large orange area um, here, we've got a, we've developed a number of concepts for FBO expansion, maintenance, repair, and overhaul facility uh, expansion, cargo facility support, um, just-in-time delivery support. Um, that would be located in that area. With future expansion capability off both ends, we've got a fuel farm expansion provision up to the north here. Uh, future firefighting facility to support the future development of the north uh, the Skyplex area. Uh, advanced air mobility site. Uh, away from the runways so that to reduce the potential conflicts, but looking forward and seeing where the industry is going and the trends, trying to provide some capability to support that activity into the future. And then uh, future expansion and maintenance facilities here to the south. Uh, we do have provisions for a uh, parallel, a apron edge parallel taxi lane to connect all of the aprons to 
provide maximum flexibility of how that north area ultimately gets developed, as well as long-term provisions and setbacks to allow a future second parallel taxiway uh, on that north uh, side of the airport. As we, uh, as we look uh, at the ultimate development, one of the key elements there as we start to look to 2041 and beyond is the provision for that future parallel runway. Uh, well, the, the actual length of that runway and the, the spacing um, has been set and reconfirmed as part of this study. Uh, one thing that has been updated is the, the actual design of the taxiway fillets and, and other elements of the layout. Um, FAA issued new advisory guidance related to how airfield uh, layouts and, and uh, taxiway design should occur. And so all of that's been updated as part of this master plan process to reflect the latest FAA standards. There's also the provision for a third cross field taxiway here. So as we take a step back and we look at the overall uh, land use for the airport and how the, the the overall lands, um, the plan for the overall lands. We have the airport operations area, which are the runways and the areas close into the, the runways. We have the aviation and airport support, which is essentially the air areas that require airfield access and the areas that are adjacent uh, to the, the uh, airfield. Uh, then as you move farther away, we get into other types of uses, potential aviation and non-aviation uses or non-aviation and aviation support uses that don't necessarily require that direct uh, airfield access. One of the key things we also did as part of the master plan process is took a look at the, uh, the environmental conditions at the airport, trying to understand the challenges that might be faced in implementing the projects and making sure that you could actually implement them um, in a feasible uh, basis. There was a, an environmental assessment that was conducted in 1994 that developed uh, the, the provisions for the midfield de terminal development as well as the future parallel um, runway. Everything that the, um, much of the projects that have been implemented at the airport today have been moving through the different elements uh, of that project. Um, and many of the, um, uh, the environmental conditions within that area have already been mitigated and permitted and, and addressed. So uh, when you're talking about the wetlands or things like that, the physical impacts have, have already been addressed for most of what we have relative to that midfield um, area and the provision for the future parallel runway. We did a, an updated review looking at some of the operational conditions, um, things like noise, air quality that are affected by operations as well as the wetlands and wildlife conditions relative to other parts of the uh, airport itself. Um, and ultimately concluded that all of the airport projects that are identified in the master plan through 2041 would be under the current environmental thresholds uh, of significance. Um, this doesn't include some of the north area skyplex development area, um, which could require additional mitigation for some of the wetlands and things like that um, up in that area uh, as the, uh, the airport would develop. This shows what the noise conditions look like in 2022 based on FAA criteria, uh, DNL contours. Um, the FAA considers the DNL 65 contour as the threshold for significance when it comes to noise. Uh, in 2022, that contour is completely on airport property. Uh, but I also want to acknowledge that Lee County has adopted the DNL 60 for the purposes of land use controls making sure that you minimize the potential future encroachment uh, around the airport. Uh, and that does extend off airport and there is no non-compatible land uses uh, within that, that area. And then what you see in dash lines is the DNL 55. This receives 10% of the noise energy that the FAA considers significant. Um, and this is an area that the county has established as a notification area. So areas that fall within that um, boundary would be provided notifications if they were um, being moving in or developing non-compatible or noise sensitive properties within that area. We also generated contours looking beyond when the new runway comes online beyond 2041. What would that look like? Um, we can see that the blue contours, the, the significant contours from an uh, FAA standpoint are largely on airport with a slight little tick that goes off just to the northeast here. The 60 uh, DNL contour 
completely compatible property um, all around the airport. And you can see what the 55 uh, looks like as well. But nothing that would be considered non-compatible or noise sensitive within either the DNL 60 or 65 noise contours, even as we look well out into the future. One thing that we do note is that the airport um, had acquired uh, a fair amount of land in the Timber Trails area. Uh, these are rural ranchette lands. Um, back when the, uh, when the original planning was being done for the, for the runway itself, the runway refinement studies uh, shortened that runway, uh, reconfigured that runway slightly, that, that future parallel. As we look at the noise conditions and we look at the long-term effects relative to timber trails, um, one of the recommendations that's coming out of the study is, is disposing of that land, essentially selling that land. Uh, we've determined that that land is outside the future DNL 60, although it is within the, the future 55. But um, one of the challenges with maintaining that land is that you have ongoing maintenance and security concerns uh, with that land. So um, one of the recommendations is to, to dispose of that, which is also supported by the, uh, the Lee County Attorney's Office in reviewing that particular condition. Uh, looking at the wetlands and wildlife, I talked a, a little bit about it. Um, the, the purple or magenta boundary here, that's the limits of the 1994 EA that included the midfield development and that parallel runway. As we look at, and that really addressed uh, all of the mitigation associated with everything within that, that contour or within that limit. Uh, as we begin to look beyond it, we know that much of the North Area Plan is redevelopment. All of the physical impacts have already been incurred in that part of the airport. So it's really any development that would occur up in these areas where there hasn't been a previous physical impact that you'd have to address potential mitigation uh, associated with, with those projects. Um, so uh, airport's in really good position to continue to, to move forward and advance uh, the projects uh, from the physical impact uh, basis. Uh, we did look at air quality as well. We generated uh, air emissions for 2021 as well as that future uh, condition when the new runway comes online. We looked at all of the national air ambient air quality standards that are identified by the EPA, uh, what the, the change in, in exposure would be. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that as you bring a new runway on in the future, it reduces your delays, which reduces your fuel burn, and that actually has a positive um, air quality benefit. So while the airport will, uh, will accommodate more activity in the future, which may increase uh, emissions to a point, it's going to be partially offset with the future capacity improvements that will reduce the idling of aircraft while they're waiting to take off or uh, waiting to get to a gate because gate's available to access. Uh, kind of uh, rounding it out or summarizing it, um, over the next 10 years, we project 36 different projects throughout the, uh, the, the airport. Uh, total cost estimated at $1.8 billion. Um, that funding would be split between a number of different elements. It would include airport funds, uh, federal funds, state or federal grants, state grants, uh, and then a variety of user fees, passenger facility charges and customer facility charges. So it'd be split between all of those different, different aspects. Um, so the detailed capital program is included in the master plan with all of the specific projects and the exact timelines uh, and the phasing for each of those uh, individual projects. Summarizing the document itself, um, it's been a little over a two-year effort. We've essentially compiled about five to ten years worth of analysis that was occurring up to and through the master plan process, though. So we, we've coalesced that information, combined it in one cohesive document. Um, it's about, the document itself is about 280 pages, I think around 1,500 pages of appendices. Uh, associated with that. Um, we have included with each of the rounds of, of outreach or presentations that we've done, uh, we've included four rounds of stakeholder and public involvement um, and received uh, feedback at, and outreach at each of those uh, elements and coordinated with Lee County staff through that process as well. So this is a summary of the public outreach uh, activities just for this last round. Um, and the materials, the dot points there that you can see on the left side, that long list there is the materials that have been posted on the airport's website for review and comment. 
uh, and just want to no also note that legal notices did go out, uh, not only through the newspapers, but through social media, uh, and a variety you know, through the airport's website, and a variety of different uh, strategies there to try to make sure that the information got out to the public. So over uh, tens of thousands, essentially, total impressions that people you know, saw the post, essentially, related to the materials, um, and a few hundred master plan presentation reviews as well. Did receive uh, six comments in this round. Uh, many of those comments relate to uh, amenities uh, for the future terminal facilities or future air service that people would like to see um, relative to the airport. So I'm not going to go through uh, each of these in detail, but uh, uh, I would say that uh, everything that we, we've seen in the way of comments has, has already been addressed from a physical facility standpoint in the master plan uh, itself. And with that, the next steps is are essentially incorporating any comments that you have, uh, transmitting the documents to the FAA, FDOT, uh, and, and county staff for, for final review and comment. Uh, we'd incorporate any uh, comments that are received from those entities uh, that are minor in nature. If they're more substantive in nature, we'd come back to you for an, an additional review to, to give you a heads up and let you know uh, what, those, what those were. Um, so the ultimate plan is to publish the final on the, uh, the airport website and then incorporate it into the comp plan and other county and, and regional planning documents. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. What questions do we have for Mr. on this? Not really. I, I think it's a great job. You, that, you, you guys have done a great job presenting it to us, and um, it's nice to look into the future and pretty easy to do with that, you know, what you just showed us. Mr. I was walking through the terminal yesterday and I looked out there and I saw the new tower, which is coming along very well. I saw the construction going on and I saw a Breeze airliner backing out and I thought, as Mr. says, it's all happening, which is, uh, which is pretty amazing. I did have two questions, though, and this is just out of curiosity for me. 20 years out before we potentially have a second runway, I'm always concerned about we've had some issues and the team has done very well. Can a taxiway? And I realize we have some alternatives. Can a taxiway accept a landing based on weight and structure and stuff? I know that the airport has used parallel taxiway before to accommodate as a temporary runway to accommodate um, aircraft operations. Um, so there's a, a lot of considerations related to that, but it is something that, that can be done. Uh, I know we have some alternatives. And the second thing is the future of electric vehicles. Uh, is an unknown, so to speak. So in the provisions, whether it's in the parking facilities, long-term parking, are we making any provisions or thinking about what those, what that need's going to be? Yeah, the, the future utility needs and infrastructure needs, particularly electricity, is, is a key one for, for planning of airport facilities, you know, nationally and, and here as well. We don't quite know what that's going to look like, but we know that the Question. electric <laughs> loads, are, you know, have the potential to be significantly higher than they are now. Even though, you know, as we look at as time has gone on, we've gotten way more efficient with our energy use. So we're actually using less energy per passenger than we have historically. But because of those types of factors, that, that goes up. Um, so that is a consideration. It will be something that gets ongoing uh, consideration. Uh, and it's something that's kind of kind of evolved during the course of the master plan itself. As we look out 20 years, we can anticipate that that's going to be an issue, but we can't. It's harder to nail down exactly how quickly that's going to uh, ultimately play out. So. I, I think it was the noted philosopher Mike Tyson who said, "Everybody's got a plan until you hit them in the mouth." <laughs> and and so I, my question is about contingency planning. Does this document take into account different scenarios that could happen throughout the lifespan of the plan and how to react in certain ways or at least what considerations you should look at? Yeah, so, I mean, COVID taught us a lot, right? I mean, you, no one expected that severe of a change both down and up, right? <laughs> So one of the things that we, we have incorporated in our approach is the use of planning activity levels versus just a forecast and saying, okay, this is exactly when we're gonna have something. Um, planning activity levels <coughs> basically say, hey, when we get to this point, it triggers the need to be implementing this project. So we may need to accelerate or decelerate 
different elements of development based on how quickly things uh, play out. So the goal in, in the strategy that was used in developing the master plan, trying to use an approach that provided that exact flexibility to allow us to, to kind of adapt as needed. So um, while the, the master plan document itself is published, you know, it's a fixed document, the actual planning process never ends. You know, you're constantly looking at that. And this provides the framework to give you the flexibility that you're talking about. Excellent. Any further questions on the presentation that was made to us? Yeah, Mr. Andre. Uh, uh, take it off of what you were just talking about. Uh, it seems to me like there ought to be something in the master plan that has very specific guidance as to uh, we have had sinkholes in our runway, and we've had to deal with that. We're, we only have one runway, so we need to meet uh, to, to contingency plan in the master plan that says specifically how we're going to deal with those types of incidents. Yeah, I, I know that the uh, the airport maintains, a, a, you know, plans for regular operations and, you know, trying to deal with a number of those different elements. Um, I, you know, I, I can't speak to whether you have a plan to deal with the sinkhole situation. Again, hopefully we'll never see, you know, obviously that particular issue. Um, I, I do know that they pay a lot of attention to pavement conditions and facility conditions um, and making sure that they're, you know, getting ahead of the game or continue to stay ahead of the, the game whenever there's an issue, you know, playing out. But uh, I, I can't, the master plan itself, generally, you're ten tending to look a little bit longer term. You can't anticipate everything that's going to necessarily occur on a day-to-day -day basis, but um, the airport, I, I don't know. I would have to defer. So to Maybe Ben could. <laughs> to Mr. Siegel, yeah. I, I know you all do have some contingency yes, planning sir. for things like that. Talk, talk about that a little bit. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. So something, a contingency for something that might happen to the runway would really fall more into our operations you know, area, and we do have contingency plans, and we have agreements even with the airlines that provide us the flexibility to make, to make decisions, if you will, from an airport perspective to um, uh, op open that runway back up. Um, but yes, things can happen. We have one. We recognize that. We have not, knock on wood, been in a situation where we've had a, uh, an event that occurred that shut down the runway for a significant amount of time. Um, like a sinkhole or something like that. We've had events on the runway that have shut us down for, for hours, you know, or, you know, uh, recently we had a United situation that shut us down for a good part of a day. Well, I, I the, was wondering in and, relation and, to that. And, so. we have, and we have taken steps to um, deal with the situation, that particular situation going forward, uh, but we do have contingency for the removal of aircraft and things like that. We have on-call situations where if there's something that goes on in the runway, you know, happens to the runway where we can repair it, but it doesn't mean that we wouldn't be shut down for a period of time because we only have one. There are very strict guidelines in terms of how you can, how you can operate and what you can operate and, you know, restricting, you know, certain types of activities. Now, the question that I probably get the most when I'm doing presentations out there is why don't we have a second runway? We should have a second runway because what if something happens? Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is if we built a second runway tomorrow, um, first of all, we would have to pay for it ourselves. Um, we wouldn't have any participation from the FAA. Um, very expensive piece of pavement. It would not get used. Um, it would be the furthest piece of pavement away from the terminal. So the all the airlines would be using is the, is the existing runway for it to be available to be used at any time, it would have to continuously be certified. And to keep it certified, it has to be maintained. And um, it would be just an incredibly expensive piece of pavement that would almost never be used unless we have that event. And it would just, the cost that we would have to build into our business model to build it and maintain it would send the cost of doing business here absolutely through the roof. Um, there's really no significant benefit to us other than if we do have a situation where we are shut down for a period of time, a few days, financially, the risk of that, we, we're better off there than we would be building an entirely new runway right now. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the plain truth. Um, 
because we have the contingency plans to get us reopened, and 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 we also have insurance, a business interruption insurance that we that we use. So, uh, but we have we have um, a great staff, great teams, and great contingency plans to, to keep us operating, and we've been doing it since really 1983. So, I was just surprised that with a flat tire on the airplane shut us down for that length of time. Seems very right. unusual, very unusual, and that was I would put that in a very in a unique category, and I would not expect to see that happen again. Um, that was a situation between with, with an airline that probably should not have should not have taken that long. I'll just I'll just say that. Thank you. Thank you. So, so one Chris, comment: uh, things happen. An uh, airplane could crash right on our runway and it would be shut down. I don't know how long it would take them to investigate it and get all the pieces and all that. Heaven forbid that doesn't happen. But it's like the I-95 crash that shut the whole thing down, which is one of the most trans-used uh, interstates in the whole United States. And the first thing was, oh, it's going to be months and you know all of this. And 12 days they had the bridge open. That's how these guys work. Mm -hmm. They would not stop. Yeah. Ben wouldn't go home until that thing was open, even if it took a week. So I know that to be a fact. So we're in great hands. And, and you can't, you cannot have a contingency for everything that could possibly happen in the world. It's just that simple, right? And, yeah. You know, we just went through, you know, obviously Hurricane Ian, you know, the fifth largest storm to ever hit the U.S. And, you know, that... We opened up our facility. Our runways at both airports were open within 24 hours. Um, so you know that was that was a different type of situation. But nonetheless, um, we we made it happen, and um, we're prepared. You know that's what we do all day, every day is be prepared for those types of events, and we do daily inspections, multiple daily inspections of our airfield um, to ensure that we're not missing anything that's going on with our pavement, because that is the most critical piece of infrastructure that we have at this airport. So. Commissioner Greenwell? Yeah, uh, I think we have a great example uh, with Ian taking out our bridges. Uh, when things get, need to get done, they can get done. Mm -hmm. um, and when you've got the right people in place, things can happen pretty quick. There's some great contractors in this county and uh, some great politicians like Governor DeSantis that makes things happen like they're supposed to happen when we in need. So I don't ever see us in, almost no matter what uh, when you get the the bureaucratic stuff out of the way, how fast things could be built would be nothing to build another runway if we could get all that out of the way. So um, I, I, I think, like you said, until until the use is there, it makes no sense to to be in a position where we're just totally mark uh, putting ourselves in a position to be out of the market um, with high prices here. So it makes sense to do what we do because we know we can fix it if we need to. All right, and you know, I, I appreciated the way uh, you, you answered the question about contingency planning. My mind was more in relation to planning levels and um, and what happens if the economy, the cycles of the economy, go up and down. And you know, I mean, we all read the Wall Street Journal and all that kind of stuff, and we see the the doom and gloom predictions, but we also see things coming back too. So you know, just that that idea of planning levels and when to pull the triggers on certain improvements uh, based on what activity you're seeing seems to make a lot of sense to me. So. I appreciated that answer. Well, I think it was a great presentation. Do you want to make a comment? Okay, good. So at this point, we'll go to public comment um, for item 25, which was the great presentation we just saw on the master plan. Does anybody wish to share any public comments today? Okay, I see no public comments, so we'll come back to the board. Um, folks, would somebody like to make a motion to approve this? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Motion to approve from Commissioner Greenwell, second from Commissioner Sandelli. Do we have any further discussion at all? All right, very good discussion on that. Great presentation. Thank you. Any uh, objection to the motion? Okay, I see no objections. That motion carries unanimously. All right, at this time, we will move to the public hearing agenda. I'd like to turn to our county attorney's office. Do I need to convene as the Board of County Commissioners at this time? Yes. Okay, so at this time, I'd like to announce that we are convening as the Board of Lee County Commissioners. And uh, let me turn back to you all. Please introduce what we need to do today. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item 26, uh, this is a little bit of an unusual uh, situation, not quite uh, 
um, as uh, this has been planned. But uh, items 26 and 27 uh, were to be associated with a public hearing that we uh, that the board would be conducting uh, to consider uh, potential changes to Lee County Ordinance 94-09, which is the airport's rules and regulations ordinance relating to establishment of a new customer facility charge in connection with um, improvements that are being planned to uh, parking in round car facilities. Um, so, um, but after, uh, after further review uh, and consultation with the rental car companies uh, that requested some additional time to consider the proposed changes to the ordinance, um, the, uh, the authority staff has uh, elected to uh, ask the board to defer item 26 and continue item 27, which is the public hearing itself, uh, to the board's next, the board of court commissioners' next meeting um, in uh, September. That's September 7th. And that's what we're asking you today to, again, defer item 26 and continue item 27 until the board of court commissioners' next meeting in September. And that can be done with one single motion? Yes. Very good. So, commissioners, does somebody want to make the motion as outlined by our attorney? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to defer item number 26. And what was the second part of that? Continue item 27. Continue uh, item 27. Do they in September. Yeah. Correct. Okay, perfect. All right. I'll so, we have that. that motion from Commissioner Greenwald and the seconds from Commissioner Sandelli. Do we have any, um, let me ask, does anybody wish to speak in public comment on the deferral or the continuance today? I see no public comment, so we'll come back to the board. We've made a motion. Uh, do we have any further discussion on the motion? Do we have any objections to the motion? No objections. That carries unanimously. Very good. Uh, am I now free to reconvene as the Board of Port Commissioners? Yes, you are. All right. At this time, I'd like to announce that we are reconvened as the Board of Port Commissioners. Those county commissioners are out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so at this time, we've reached the commissioner items portion of the agenda. Commissioner Greenwell, do you have anything you'd like I to share? Not. I do okay. not. Commissioner Sandelli? I have nothing I'd like to share this morning either. Um, does anybody wish to make any committee appointments? No, I see none. Okay, very good. So let's move to comments from the chair of the Airport Special Management Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I hate to always be this glowing, you know, Pollyanna. But better you than me. <laughs> our county has seen such good management from our county commissioners over the last 10 years that we've grown substantially. Our infrastructure has kept up. The airport, you can see what we're doing, how much change and everything is happening. And I just would express that the citizens of Lee County understand how much work gets done. You know, they complain all the time, but these things do not happen by themselves. And what we're seeing Scott and his crew do at Page Field, they about built out. They, 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 we get accolades every day. They're general aviation of the year, how many years? And these people work so hard and really in comparison to a lot of things, it's a labor of love for them because, you know, they're getting paid in sunshine, as they say. <laughs> so I just want to say how happy I am to be part of this because I see history and I see progress and our county is growing in leaps and bounds. It's not going to stop. And everybody associated with this is doing their level best to keep up. Amen. And that'd be my comment. Well, thank you, Mr. Chris. I appreciate that. On behalf of the board, we all say thank you very much for those kind words. It is a job sometimes where, um, you know, it, you can, we appreciate the thank yous. They don't come as often as, as they could. But the truth is that we have an amazing team here at the Port Authority. The employees who work here are just second to none. And same at the county. I love what Roger Desjardins said when he was, uh, when he was talking at his uh, last meeting about any time you give the county employees a task, they will never, ever, ever let you down. And they have not let us down through pandemics, through hurricanes, through cyber attacks, through algae crises. And so really the credit and thanks is due to the folks who do the work. And so we're, we're grateful for them. And um, so thank you very much. Well, there's so much turmoil in the world, but it's not in Lee County. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay? <laughs> While we live here. Yeah. 
Thank you, guys. Very good. Anything else from the Special Management Committee? Thank you all very much. I appreciate you pointing out the infrastructure, too. I did get a chance to speak with Senator Ben Albritton, who is the incoming, after Senator Pasadomo, will be the next Senate president. Um, you know, I talked to him about our infrastructure needs. So if you look at, we're in a very high growth environment. A lot of people are moving here. But if you add to that the cost increases that have come through just rapid inflation, our transportation budget went up by 29%. Well, on a $1 billion budget, 29% is nearly $300 million that doesn't just appear out of thin air. And so it's created quite a math problem. My whole time on the board for the last nearly 10 years, we've been able to pay as you go and really keep up with the infrastructure. But with these kind of conditions now, it's getting hard to be able to do that. And so um, I got a chance to in talk with the senator about that. He was extremely receptive and understanding of the problem. And so, Lord willing, um, you know, we'll continue that conversation and see even more help come from Tallahassee to help deal with the success that we're all having. I mean, people want to be in Florida. I think that's a sign that you're doing something right. So. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. We'll move to the executive director report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, during the month of May, we had 760,330 passengers travel through RSW. This was a decrease of 9% compared to May 2022. However, we are starting to see some improvements in the number of flights and seats, seats offered by our airline partners for the summer months. Uh, so it's a good sign. The traffic leader in May was Delta with 176,306 passengers and rounding out the top five airlines was Southwest, American, United, and JetBlue. Page Field saw 19,349 operations, which was a 25% increase compared to May of 2022 and a new monthly record for us. Much of this increase is due to the pilot training in airport at the airport-based flight schools. Um, something that um, I certainly never take for granted, and I'm sure you'll, you'll appreciate when I explain to you, we have annually, we have to go through our Part um, 139 FAA inspection. Um, without our 139 certificate, we really just don't exist. I mean, that's why we can be a commercial service airport is because we have our 139 certificate. So we had our 139 inspection. Um, it's typically in May of each year. And uh, this year, our team um, passed with, uh, we passed with zero discrepancies. And it's a very, very involved um, process. And the amount of detail that we have to maintain throughout the year to um, not only maintain this uh, certificate, but to, but actually go through it with zero discrepancies, not one comment um, from the FAA is pretty, is pretty oh, incredible. Right. And I really just want to um, just make a few comments <laughs> regarding that. The in-depth inspections review um, takes place in, with aircraft um, rescue and firefighting response times, runway and taxi markings, lighting and signage, fueling facilities, record retention for compliance with all of our regulation and safety requirements, which are all very, very essential to maintaining our operation status as a commercial service airport. And again, we did it with zero discrepancies this, this past year. The inspector praised RSW as having a great team environment with staff that is passionate about safety. And I really just want to recognize um, just the team, you know, our, our directors and leaders, um, but there's so many men and women that are really kind of behind this, you know, that aren't necessarily here today um, that really make all this happen. But it really starts, you know, with Steve Hennigan. Um, we've got our ARF chief. Is Tracy here? Did he make it here? No. Uh, James, are you here? James Furiosa, our maintenance director. Um, Gil, did Gil make it here today? No? Okay, and Gil, Gil Forgay is our operations director. Um, those are the primary individuals um, that are really kind of lead the departments, if you will, that have to um, help us get through that entire inspection process. So I just want to congratulate all of them. And thank you. Next, um, this is hot off the press. Um, I'd like to, um, Brian, stand up. <laughs> Brian McGonagall. <laughs> so last night, Mr. McGonagall's here, but there's a big conference going out in Phoenix, um, Business of Airports. It's Airports Council International Annual Conference. And Mr. McGonagall, our Deputy Executive Director and CFO, was named Medium Hub Airport Finance Professional of the Year. Wow. Well, Airports Council International. So, 
Um, I've worked with Brian um, for, well, Brian, was it 25 plus years now? 25 years. Yeah. And uh, such a hard worker, such a great guy. I'm just, I was just so excited when I, when I learned about this. And it's a very distinguished award and obviously very well deserved. He's, he's contributed so much, not just to our airport, but to the industry as a whole. And um, I just wanted to, you know, congratulate you, Brian, and, and recognize you today. So um, last, this isn't the greatest news for the airport, but I'm really excited for our buddy, Mark Trank, here. So Mark, um, I don't know if, if Richard had a chance to, to, to let the board know, but Mark is moving on. Oh. Mark is, um, he's been with the port, uh, the county attorney for how many years? This is my ninth year. Your ninth year with the county attorneys, and he's been at the airport for probably over three years, and he's uh, taken a position at Norfolk. I say yeah, Norfolk Airport Authority. Norfolk Airport Authority as general counsel. It's a great opportunity for him. We are very sad to see him go. Um, he's been a great addition um, to our team out here, and we've relied on him so much, and I really kind of sad, obviously, that he's leaving, um, and I know. Uh, the county attorney's office isn't isn't have isn't real excited about him leaving it either. But we want to just wish him well um, on his new endeavor. Virginia is your home, correct? Your correct, yeah. your correct home. So he gets to go back home. And um, I just wanted to thank you publicly for all your everything you did for us over the past three years. He's been fantastic to work with, and uh, we're gonna miss him. Yes. So anyway, so thank you, Mark. Thank you. And that is all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Ben. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Mark, actually, it's your turn on the agenda, too. Um, thanks for keeping us out of trouble all these years. Yeah. Uh, do you have any items that you'd like to share with us today? No items, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We are going to miss you and appreciate your service. I think you got here right around the same time I did, then about <laughs> nine, nine and a half years ago. And so it's been a pleasure. And Thank you very much. The best. Um, all right, so at this time, we would like to open the floor to public comment on matters that were not on the agenda today. Does anybody wish to speak in public comment today? All right, well, thank you very much, folks. I see no further business before us, so we're adjourned. Thank you. Good job.